Uh, so welcome to the DARA Unit 4 training session, uh, the 2001 edition, 2021 edition. Um, so we'd just like to take this talk to give you a, uh, to go through the course outline and give you a little bit of explanation of what uh, what the course is about and some general notices about how things will happen. Uh, so just to, before we start, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Robert Bezik. I'm from the University of Manchester and General Bank Centre of Astrophysics, where I'm the acting head of the Sun, Stars and Galaxies Research Group. Um, in addition to that, I'm also the head of the science operations uh, team within the UK's National Radio Astronomy Facility, which is responsible for email and array and VLBI operations with in the UK. Um, I'm in this role here because I'm helping to coordinate the Unit 4 training this year along with uh, Dr Jack Radcliffe and I'll pass over to him to introduce himself now. Thanks Rob. Um, so hi everyone, um, I'm Jack, you've probably seen my name on the website if you've been looking at this already. Um, so I'm a Soraya postdoc, soon to be lecturer at the University of Pretoria, um, but I also am affiliated with the University of Manchester. So been involved with with Dara at least teaching this for for six years now already so um yeah I hope you enjoy this course and thanks for for coming um in these sort of difficult times at the moment um so today as Rob said we're just going to go through um an introduction to this course and um, you'll have much more of the interesting stuff coming a little bit later so before we start, we, we have to talk about the, the code of conduct for the course. Um, and um, of course, we're going to promote a, an inclusive, non-discriminatory nature. Um, we've got to treat everyone with respect and dignity, of course. Um, so anything which, um, any sort of harassment is not going to be tolerated. So please, if you experience this or you um, someone comes to you and about this, please let us know as soon as possible and we can deal with this as swiftly as possible. Um, if anyone is found doing this and doesn't stop doing it, they will be expelled from the course. So that's the horrible thing. Um, so um, please just respect everyone else that, that's on here. The This introductory unit uh, or lecture, um, this is kind of the overview of what we're going to talk about. I'll cover the the first part about the aims and then I'll, I'll flip back to Robert to cover the last three parts. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about the, the aims of this unit, um, but also then Rob will talk about the schedule, um, which your local tutors will, will tell you more about. Um, the support lines that we've got now that lots of this is online and remote. Um, and then we'll also finish with, of course, thanking everyone that's been involved because this has been a, a truly monumental effort comprising of about 40 or 50 different people um, working within about a couple of weeks to get this organized. So the, the aims of this unit is basically simple. Um, in your first part of the unit, you learn about the science. In units two and three, which you'll do after this, unfortunately, you'll learn about the engineering um, of the telescopes and how they operate. But then the aims of this unit is how we get from the telescope, as we have Meerkat in our, in our slide here, um, all the way to getting our science ready images. So how you go from the data that's recorded in your telescope to these beautiful images. So this is just the image of the, the galactic center that was released with Meerkat's inauguration in 2018. So that's simply what this unit is about. Um, so in a little bit more complex terms, we're, we're gonna go through lots and lots of different topics. These are gonna be covered by um, both the workshops and the um, and the lectures, which are given by the remote tutors. Um, so you should have just done your CHPC course. Um, so we're going to do a bit of Unix and Python refresh, but also in a, a context of our data and reduction uh, package called CASA. Um, but then we'll also do the, the theory behind all the data reduction protocols that you're going to do in the workshop. So this includes fundamentals of radiant spirometry, uh, how we calibrate continuum data, how we image this, um, more advanced sort of calibration techniques such as self-calibration and how we deal with spectral lines, um, followed by, you know, you're going to get some skills of how to do this yourself. So how do you work out what the uh, errors in your data are? Um, how do you extract the scientific information you need to make your amazing, possibly noble science winning uh, uh, contributions? And then also we've got a nice little workshop on how to write your own telescope proposals. So 
if you want to have meerkat time or you want to um, get AVN time when it comes online, you'll be able to do this um, to the best of your ability and get some time to get some nice science. And so by the end of this unit, the goal is, is that you're going to be able to know the principles of radio interferometry. Um, so flagging, calibration, and imaging. Um, just as a, a caveat, well, just as a, a note here, radio interferometry can be quite complex. So don't uh, worry if you find it quite uh, challenging to start. It does take some experience to get used to this. Um, but then we're, we're going to try and hope through the science talks and uh, through the workshops that you'll start to see how interferometry is applicable to, to astronomy research and also now have the base tools to do your own analysis of data um, while also getting your own data through telescopes. So I think the final thing for this or the benefits to you are, is that you're gonna have hands-on experience with radio data. This will be similar to the African VLBI network as we'll, we see the possibility of this on the right, where um, possible conversion. So this should be updated now where we've got Ghana online. Um, but also these other antennas in the in the African uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but this is also prime experience for you to get involved with SK and Meerkat. Um, and also crucially, VLBI astronomers are going to be in high demand when you get to SK2, because that will be a VLBI instrument like we see with these SK IOP stations. Um, or this uh, plot from Gaylard, I think, is a bit old now, um, showing the IOP stations from SK going across all of sub-Saharan Africa. But also, you know, if, you, if you're not so interested in astronomy, you're, the programming you'll get from this unit will be invaluable in, in many jobs. So finance will want you, software development will want you, but also the signal processing algorithms that you'll be using um, are going to be crucial for electronic engineering, RF development, so you can go into mobile phone networks or things like this. Um, and finally, of course, the, the place to be is South Africa and sub-Saharan Africa for the SKA. So there's going to be lots of SKA opportunities going forward. So there's lots of benefits for you um, doing this unit and doing this course. So I'm going to pass this over now back to, to Dr. Bezik, who will talk to you more about the logistics of the course. Thanks, Jack. Um, so just to go through what is going to happen in the next two weeks, uh, just, just as to give you an overview, um, the course itself um, is scheduled to run for two weeks, roughly 10 days or so, um, and it covers multiple components. So the key elements of this are a series of pre-recorded lectures, which uh, will cover all of the topics that Jack has just explained, ranging from how interferometers work to their fundamentals and to how we calibrate and make our images from those, those observations. And um, this will be combined with a series of self-taught, hands-on experience through tutorials and data workshops. And in particular, um, this will take you to look at real data from world-class arrays where you can analyze it from the very beginning all the way through to making your images at the final endpoints. Um, so that's going to be the core elements of the schedule that you'll have over the next two weeks. Interspersed with that, we also have a series of science topic talks from experts from around the world, which will really help to give you an understanding of why we're doing these observations, why we're what's spending the time to analyze them this data and make the final images and give you that context. So there's an enormous breadth of science talks that we're doing in just, just a few talks, but a few very pertinent talks that will explain impact of science from VLBI through to the impact of science of Meerkat and other instruments, as well as how science and the astronomy um, relates to more social educational elements as well. So this was really quite an exciting program of events there. Um, so if we move on to the next slide, Jack, thank you. Um, so the support network. Now, as Jack has just mentioned, many of the topics we're going to be discussing are relatively complex, and we understand that they're also relatively new to you. Um, so what we have done is we've set up a, a series of supporting elements to try and help you through this course and to support the pre-recorded lectures and self-taught tutorial modules alongside that. So that support comes in a variety of forms. It comes in your local tutors who are themselves experts in, in many of these areas and they, they can be there as your first port of call. 
Um, but we're also having a series of live Q&A sessions, which will last for around 30 minutes, once a day, every day, where we will have a panel of remote experts from across the UK, Europe, South Africa, and around the world in general, that will be able to sit on those panels and you will be able to ask them questions or ask, or ask them to discuss topics that you're looking at through this two week period of study um, and they can discuss them more at length. So that's one area. And in addition to that, we're also setting up a Slack, which is an instant messaging software platform, um, which you will all be invited to be members of. And we invite you this morning to make sure you can log on and get into that system where that will allow you to post questions both to your local tutors uh, and tutors in other countries that are also simultaneously doing this course but also then there are no tutors as well around the world and that will hopefully give us a, a way of communicating and supporting each other as a, as a community that are doing this course. Next slide yeah. So lines of communication so I've just described briefly what they are but I just wanted to look at the structure of how we we suggest that you, you go about getting those questions that you inevitably will have. Um, and they may be questions just because there's more information you want. There's additional areas you want to understand more about the topic that isn't explained fully in the lectures. Or there may be just issues where you, you're having problems with the tutorial and you just need some help. So the first port of call is, is to look at the Slack channels. The messages and questions that are sent to the Slack channels will be there. You can scroll back through them. Um, if people haven't used Slack, it's, it's, it's a bit like a, a WhatsApp group almost, but it's set in a series of channels so you can navigate back and forth. You can post pictures, you can post um, screenshots of what your problems are or what your results are. And you know, we want to use this as a, a sort of community engagement communication channel for all of the students across all of the countries to communicate with each other. Then after that, we've got the local tutors, and then we've also got your fellow students that, that may be in different countries. And, and I include the local tutors that are, in, are doing this course with um, students in many different countries. They're all available there to help you, and the Slack channel will give you that route towards that. Um, in addition to that, as I've mentioned, we'll have a live Q&A session that will be run via a Zoom uh, call where everyone is invited to come and join. Um, it's not obligatory that you have to, if you're very busy and getting on so well with things, by all means spend that time doing it, but we really invite and encourage you to join that call, um, to listen to the questions, listen to the discussions that we'll have there, and, and hopefully get some further answers. We do ask that to allow that to be as efficient as possible, you pre-post those questions via Slack to the group, and there's an explanation of that in your pack that your local tutors will have. Um, following on from that, the next portal call is to contact the remote tutors, which you can do via the Slack app as well, um, and that will give you an opportunity to give, get some answers via those routes. So whatever happens along the way, you know, just remember there's no silly questions, so just, just ask the questions and we will try and be there to help you along, along that platform and along that way forward. Okay, next slide. So just to give you a little bit more detail, and I've said many of those things, the Slack channel will be there. It's there for your use. Um, please don't abuse it, of course, but please do use it. Um, it's a great way of communicating. So when you get to log on, and you'll note at the bottom of this slide, there is a, a, an invite um, address. Uh, that is also available in the uh, in the pack that your local tutors will have. So don't feel you need to copy that long address down at this stage. Um, install the Slack app this morning um, and then get yourself involved in that. Um, and that will be a great line of communication. So please use it to post to different channels. And we've given you an explanation in the pack of material that your local tutors have about what those channels really should be used for. Um, and they have a variety of purposes to allow both communication between the students and also the local tutors and the remote tutors. Um, you can also use that, and we also request that you post things to that for the topics of live Zoom chats. You know, we'll be having the first one of those this afternoon at 1.30 UTC. Um, please check your time zone for your local 
multiple time zones to join at the right moment. Um, so post that there. Jack and myself will both be on that call today and we'll both be able to further elaborate on any of the things we've given in this talk or other areas of the course itself. So next slide, please. So the daily, daily Q&A sessions. Um, so as I just mentioned, they'll be run by Zoom. But to be more precise, what we're going to do is we'll have a small panel of three to four experts from around the world that will be different experts each day that will be on those calls. Um, so they will be able to answer questions about the lectures that have gone on, um, but also about the tutorials and also about things in general that you might want to ask. Um, not all of them will some of them will be the lecturers that are actually doing the pre-recorded lectures that you are watching um, and others will be just experts in their field that we've invited to sit on these panels um, as i mentioned please just post comments and questions areas that you might want to be discussed a bit further on the slack channel but we also would like to have live questions so if you want to answer the live question we advise you just to put that question in the chat box as a text message in zoom or raise your hand in the zoom functionality because there'll be many people potentially on the call and it's quite hard to see who's asking a question um, obviously try and have um, good zoom etiquette so put yourself on mute when you're not speaking and so forth because otherwise it'll become quite hard for everyone to communicate Okay, so last but no means least. Um, firstly, I hope that everyone really enjoys this, uh, this course. The next two weeks, hopefully you should learn many things that are new um, and also overcome many challenges about the work that is, is involved in the complexity of some of the subject matter that we're going to be going through in the next, next night or so. Um, as Jack has already mentioned, this has been a colossal effort for many, many people to put all of this work together. And in total, over 40 individuals have given up their time to produce lectures, produce course material, um, and also be there on Slack, for instance, to ask your questions over the next two weeks. So I'd like to really thank those people personally, from Jack and myself's point of view, where we've been trying to coordinate and pull this together. We couldn't have done it with all of, without all of that help. Yeah, thank um, you, everyone. But the last and most important thing is thank you for your participation and thank you in advance for your enthusiasm that I hope will come through during the next two weeks. Um, everyone that is helping and everyone that is available on Slack, uh, remote tutors that have given lectures, and the local tutors most importantly, they're all here because they really want to teach this material to you, they really want you to get as much as you can out of this next two weeks. So take that opportunity and don't be afraid to ask any questions and we will try and help our best throughout. So good luck for the next two weeks. <laughs>